what, for some reason, uh, the world of futuristic Chicago is divided into five factions. Each are dedicated to cultivating a particular virtue in their members. She feels stifled and has to choose, you know, where she wants to go, and she feels this, you know, kind of nudge toward Dauntless, which is the brave faction. Um, but joining it would mean leaving her family behind forever. So the book is about her choice and its consequences. Excellent. I get asked a lot, how does it feel to play an action star or superhero? And I remember having multiple conversations with Neil before beginning this film that I never saw her as a superhero and I never saw her as an action star. I saw her as a very normal young woman who had to figure herself out as well as help the community around her. She's a very, um, oh gosh, you guys, there's so many of you. This is so nerve-wracking. You can't see um, most of them. It's just like a faceless <laughs> boy. She's, <laughs> she's a very normal young woman who's put in very elevated situations and is sort of forced to find herself through those experiences. And I thought that that was really neat and a really rare opportunity. And what I really loved about Tris is that she was in a situation and she rose to the occasion and found the bravery within herself and the courage within herself to help those around her as well as help herself. Yeah. Um, so, Theo. Mm -hmm. Theo, uh, I'm very comfortable saying that you're a dreamy fellow. Um, <laughs> well, that's actually quite funny because the way we're watching that uh, clip, from here it's all distorted, so our faces are about five times the size. I was like, Jesus, Four has really put on some weight. <laughs> <laughs> um, Honestly, just listening to your accent, like half the audience just got pregnant. I don't know how that works. Insemination by a <laughs> But it's a, you know, I mean, any sort of joke, like, oh, you're the heartthrobby guy, but, um, but this character is not, he's not, you wouldn't say he's just a heartthrobby guy, like, he's, it's like, what do you think makes him complex? That's what I loved about him from the moment I read, read the books and then read the scripts, is he is this, he's a really, he's quite old school, and I think he's a man with this very centered sense of masculinity, and he's not afraid to demonstrate what he's afraid of and I think ironically that makes him more masculine and, and tougher in a funny way. One of my favorite things in the book and in the film is when they're on the ferris wheel and you know he's, he's afraid of heights and Tris says what are you, are you scared of heights and he doesn't shy away from me he says yeah of course I am. No, everyone, you know you can't be afraid of, of nothing everyone's afraid of something and that's the concept that I loved about the book you know one of the many is, is bravery it's not being fearless it's about how you deal with with uh, things that are scary and fear in itself you know how, how you deal with things in the face of fear and, how, and and i think that's so pertinent to to everyone every day you know whether you're a moderator you know you you have nerves or whether you're a doctor or whether you're a lawyer you know everyone gets scared and it's how you deal with it and how you face it in the in the strongest bravest way that's what defines you and makes you brave and strong as a person Neil, was there anything you read in the book that you're like, how are we going to shoot that? Like, was there anything that seems that yeah, you weren't going to be able to? The, the daunting stuff was uh, the, the, the train getting on, jumping. You know, they run, they run and jump on these moving trains, and then while the train's moving, they jump off onto a seven-story building. And so, I'm just thinking, how the hell are we going to do that? <laughs> talents we have on this panel is just it's it's exciting it's it's cool to see everybody they're gonna be everyone huge what about you okay what was your experience that was a lot of fun i mean you know from uh just being on the set and seeing the youthful exuberance and the banter uh to singing in the band with shailene and zoe uh caleb in the movie is really tall and so am I in real life. They're really, it's the, actually the same height. The same exact height? That's weird. You should be in every movie and all the parts. <laughs> what about you, Theo? Uh, me, yes. Uh, I would say uh, I'm extremely protective of Shay by nature, so much that I don't even let her go to the bathroom, to be honest, without me standing outside the door. <laughs> can be problematic, but I just think I should be there, you know, she needs protecting, you know, and that kind of, you know, that's, that's how it goes. Apology show. <laughs> Theo is a seriously good fighter, for real. He is an incredible. Dangerously good fighter. Um, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> I, I think that I'm similar to Tris in... Oh gosh. You know, I really, I really sort of similar to what Maggie was saying. I really admire Dauntless because of the bravery that's involved in their faction. And 
I'd like to think that I'm brave. And so, uh, you are. I respond. I'm brave. I, I really to Tristan that way. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was like climbing up the actual Ferris wheel, like, oh, let's go higher. And <laughs> Seriously, and, and ironically, she was like, yes, I may be afraid of heights, as she was at the very top, like dangling <laughs> off the side. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm tough, I'm tough. <laughs> What about you, Zoe? Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, Christina, she, she comes from candor, so she, you know, they all, they're all about honesty, so she kind of says whatever she wants, whenever she wants, kind of a foot in the mouth situation. Um, I have a bit of an issue with, with word vomit, just kind of like saying whatever I think immediately. So, in that way, I'm kind of like Christina. Just never stop talking. <laughs> uh, Will is uh, he's, he's quite good at standing up for his friends and so I think that's something that I would strive to do as well so that's something I share with him Well, um, apart from the fact that Edward and I look surprisingly alike um, I think uh, I've always enjoyed learning and obviously Edward is an erudite transfer to Dauntless and I think he... Uh, he takes that hard-working uh, aspect into his learning of fighting, and uh, I've always been a hard worker, so... Um, I think to explain why I'm like Al, <clears throat> this would have to turn into one giant therapy session. <laughs> but, um, I think, uh, you know, when you're an actor, you get these audition things, and they send you a little description of the character, and sometimes it's, hot surfer guy, and you're like, who cares? <laughs> and, uh, but when I got Al, it was like quiet, gentle, you know, big, and like, you know, and I, I started to, and like shy and things like that. And I don't know, I really related with him, so, you know, I'm not going to say I didn't do a lot of character work for it, but, you know, it was just when you relate so much to a character, it makes it easier, so that's why I really. Next. Um, I like to think there aren't a lot of ways that like Molly, but um, she is very tall, and so am I, much like uh, Ansel. Um, and she loves to fight, and I found strangely through this process that I do too. <laughs> <laughs> You're a really good fighter, yeah, may bad, I add. Badass, again. Yeah. So, Peter is not very likable. <laughs> Thanks. But I defend Peter, we can talk about it later if you want to, I'll be hanging around at the uh, convention center. But Peter actually, both he and I, uh, like classical music. <laughs> and we both, we both uh, brush our teeth in the shower. <laughs> He's a good guy. He's misunderstood. 